Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason T. Lewis, and today we are going to talk about accessories for the Mac Studio, things that you might want to have that you can put on your desktop that then will accentuate your usage of the Mac Studio, or really any desktop Mac, or really any Mac, maybe any PC, well, some of it. Anyway, uh, if this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you'll like, subscribe, bell notify yourself. I'm always doing these, these videos on creativity and the tech that we use to get that stuff done. All the stuff I'm going to talk about today is going to be linked down in the description below. So you can click and go to your heart's content to find any of these things. They are affiliate links. They do help me out here on the channel. You can also become a channel member and uh, hit that join button down below if you want to get in on some of the stuff that goes along with channel membership. I'm revamping all that stuff. It's, uh, it's to come. It's all happening very soon. I've got new vim and vigor in the membership department. And uh, <laughs> you can also go to jasontlewis.com, join the mailing list. That's going to have some new uh, stuff coming out as well. Newsletter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I got some blog posts and all kinds of things. Anyway, studio display. Despite what everyone says about the studio display, the studio display is quite frankly awesome. 5K display, if you don't understand what the 5K means, 5K 218 pixels per inch is what Apple calls retina. And the retina thing is, is actually a big deal because retina means the point at which the human eyeball cannot see individual pixels. And that is very important because regular 4K monitors, they don't do that so well. And especially when you're using them with a Mac, the Mac wants to scale for the retina thing. And anyway, if you can scrape the pennies together, I've been using it now for a couple of weeks. It is really, really good. Once you've got your, uh, once you've got your monitor situation situated, you want to think, I guess, next about a keyboard. Keyboards are a very personal thing for a lot of people. Apple has long made really good keyboards, but with the Mac Studio and all the stuff that they just released recently, they came out with a new version of the Apple Magic Keyboard. And so this is it. It comes in two color, two colorways. It has this silver with black keys, and then it also has silver with white keys. It has a Touch ID button, and the Touch ID button is the biggest deal to me because with the Touch ID button, the thing is, if you use a desktop Mac or if you use a, a, a MacBook closed up on your desk, then you don't have the option to use the Touch ID, and putting in the password is annoying when you have the option to go ahead and use something like Touch ID. So this is a $200 keyboard. Uh, some people love the magic keyboards. Some people are not big fans of the magic keyboards. I really like this keyboard and I like the full scale keyboard cause I like to have the, the number pads and the home button and all that kind of stuff. I'd like to have that stuff. Now the scale of this is, you know, it's, the angle is a little low, so you have to kind of get used to that. But if you use the magic keyboard, then you know exactly what this magic keyboard feels like now. There's another keyboard that you could consider if you didn't want to, if, if you, for whatever reason, you didn't want to go with the Mac keyboard, you could go for this. This is the MX Master Keys Mini, Mini MX Master Keys. So it's like a Magic Keyboard, especially the smaller Magic Keyboard. However, uh, it has some differences. For one, a much sharper angle uh, coming up here. USB-C charging and, you know, power, good, good battery life on this. I like the typing experience on this a lot more. Well, not a lot more, but it, it has a little bit of a deeper typing experience, has some nice concave keys. So the keystrokes are very nice. It's very tactile. I mean, it's not like a mechanical keyboard or anything like that, but it's very tactile. And I like using Logitech keyboards. Um, I have a Logitech Craft keyboard that I've used for a long, long time. And this one really feels good. The MX series of keyboards is really, really nice. Now, this is a Mac specific keyboard. Again, linked down in the description below. It has a couple of tricks up its sleeve. It's a backlit keyboard, so you can bump it up. It has proximity to the key. So when you put your hands up here, it lights up. Uh, I find that the white keys uh, don't, show the backlighting as well, which can be kind of annoying, but still maybe the most functional feature of this thing is these three buttons right here. 
you can pair this with three different devices. So let's say you have a desktop and you want to use it with your desktop. You pair it to one, you pair your iPad, you pair your iPhone. I don't know, whatever you want to pair, but you can pair it to three different devices. And most of the Logitech MX series uh, keyboards and mice have this feature. I like it a lot. Again, a better typing angle for my for my money and maybe a slightly better typing experience than the Magic Keyboard. So the MX Keys Mini, especially this one made for the Mac, another good option for keyboards. Once you go keyboards, you gotta go mouse. Uh, the Magic Mouse is a divisive device and this is the MX Master 2S, my favorite mouse for productivity of all time. I like this a lot. I like it really a lot. And uh, I've used it now for three plus years, I think. Logitech sent me this and I just kind of fell in love with it. Now, what's the difference between this and the MX Master 3? Well, honestly, I, I'm not entirely sure because I don't have the MX Master 3. I have the MX Master 2S and because of the features that it has, I did not want to go to the MX Master 3 and, and like have to relearn anything. Mine's kind of, you know, heavily used. It's got all the regular buttons. It's got, you know, left and right. It's got a scroll wheel. This can be, uh, this can be free scrolling as well. Uh, you can select this that way for the free scrolling and then over here on the side is the thing that really matters. There's another scroll wheel for horizontal scrolling. You can make any of these do whatever you want in whatever program you want them to do it in. So the way that I have my my Final Cut Pro set up is I press down with my thumb to cut and then I rock my thumb up to delete. And cutting and deleting is one of the biggest things that I do in Final Cut Pro. So this is a really great option. It's like $50 right now on Amazon, whereas it was a $100 mouse when it came out. It has it, it works with the unifying receiver that Logitech, Logitech has, but it also works via Bluetooth. And it also has uh, the ability to pair to three different devices as well. So you can just move it around with you. You can keep it paired to several different things. And I like that feature as well because I have had it paired to three different devices so that I could move from one station to the next and get my work done. So that's the Logitech MX Master 2 S. Next up, one of the issues with Macs often is that it's just, it's universal across the Mac platform. I mean, even like back in the old days, the trash can Mac came with its base storage being 256 gigabytes of storage, that, ridiculous. The Mac Studio base model comes with 512, which to me is a little bit too little. I would like to see one terabyte. If you're smart with how you store things, you can have that drive always be uh, just, you know, mine's not even half full. I've got all my programs on there, et cetera, et cetera. I've taken sound libraries and different things and I've put them on different drives. I use this guy. This is the Samsung T5. So I've had this for again, probably three years or so. It is a very slim hard drive. It's like the size, it's a smaller, like shorter than a credit card, about the same width of, the, of a credit card, maybe three or so credit cards thick. USB-C plug here, very fast. And uh, the T7 is the most recent model. That's what I have linked down in the description below. This is a one terabyte drive. When I bought this, it was $250. You can buy the T7 for about $110, $115, something like that. Uh, it, storage has become, thankfully, much, much cheaper. Now that the days of the spinning hard drive are gone, this, get, get yourself one of these and uh, the Base Mac Studio and you can do anything that you want. Uh, I've never had a problem with this drive hooks up 100% of the time, very durable. So I would definitely say if, if you need more storage and if you're just buying the Mac Studio uh, and you're buying the base model, you definitely do, then this is the way to go. Now, the Mac Studio has plenty of ports on the back. I mean, we've got four Thunderbolt 4 ports, we got two USB-A ports, we got HDMI, we got all kinds of ports going on. And that's great, that's great. I mean, actually, it, with the studio display, you get another Thunderbolt port plus three USB-C ports. 
And uh, that is very impressive. They're very, very fast ports. They're 10 gigabits per second as opposed to five on the Pro Display XDR. But sometimes you need powered ports. Sometimes you just need more ports. And so here I have the CalDigit T3. Now I've had this for a long time. They now have out the CalDigit T4. And on my computer right now, running the cam links that I'm using for my cameras is the Anchor uh, Thunderbolt 4 dock that Anchor sent me recently. Again, link down in the description. But if you're not familiar with these docks, they are they are powered and they will deliver plenty of voltage to your laptops. They don't deliver the voltage to your desktops. But this has two Thunderbolt ports on the back, one that goes to the computer, one that is daisy chainable if you have other Thunderbolt devices. USB-C, you've got your nice little optical right here. And then of course you've got a uh, display port. So if you, if you have a different monitor that takes display port, then you can do that. Your power barrel and you've got ethernet. On the front here, you've got a nice uh, SD card slot. Mac Studio has that, but then you've got audio out, audio in, as well as USB-C and USB-A five gigabits per second. That's on the T3, which I believe is still available, uh, but I'm going to link to the T3, the T4, and the Anchor down in the description below. The last thing that you need to deal with uh, when you're putting together a desk setup with your brand new Mac Studio is audio. And there are a lot of different ways to deal with audio, a lot of different things that you can do. The easiest, most Mac-friendly, best-sounding option would be, of course, the AirPods Max. I have been a fan of the AirPods Max. I mean, they're not a perfect product. They've come down in price since they were released. I think now on Amazon, they're usually around $450 or $475 as opposed to the $5,500 that they were before. They have great noise cancellation. The earpads are very comfortable. They're replaceable. They're magnetized on here. And then you've got a very nice mesh here for the headband that doesn't uh, really create any hot spots or hurt your head. Uh, aluminum cans on the sides. And then you've got your, your crown that looks just like the digital crown of your Apple Watch. That's for volume, play, pause, etc., etc. And then this button here, is for turning on transparency mode, turning transparency mode on or off. And I was not sure if I, when these came out, I've had many videos that, that cover my experience with the AirPods Max. And I've got a video coming up soon, uh, my sort of one plus year review of the AirPods Max. So if you wanna see that, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But these are still kind of my go-to around the house wireless headphones. I like to work with wireless headphones on. Sometimes I don't have any sound. I just have the wireless headphones for the sensory deprivation. Uh, I love to use these with my Apple TV uh, for late night listening. They have spatial audio if you're into that. You can listen to The Mandalorian, some other shows, movies, etc., in spatial audio, but you can also with Apple Music listen to a lot of different stuff in spatial audio. And spatial audio, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's in its early days. It's developing. It's done well in some cases and not so much in the other, other cases, but it's, it's still developing. And I, I think it's going to stick around actually. So these things, whether it's spatial audio or, or whatever, these things sound great and they are the most easy and convenient way to get audio going with your Mac studio. The speakers on the studio display are good. But, you know, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a sucker for really good and they just sort of get the job done. So these things will take your audio a whole other level up. I don't even want to get into speakers that you could use because there are so many speakers and people have so many aesthetics about their speakers that I, I would want to recommend like 10 speakers. If you want me to do a video about speakers that I would recommend for a desktop setup with the Mac Studio or something like that, hit me in the comments down below. Let me know that you wanna see that video and I will make it, I will make it for you. But let's say you want a little bit better quality with your audio and uh, that starts with a DAC. And here we have the iFi Zendac V2. This thing is available on Amazon and other places. iFi sent this to me. 
It is small. I mean, it's, you know, it's like the size of my hand, but it is mighty. It has unbalanced and balanced outputs. Unbalanced is the three quarter inch plug. That's what most people have. Then you have power matching here. So this will match the sort of power of the headphones that you're using. And then a true bass feature. I'm not a big, you know, bass person. So I haven't fooled with this too much, but the power matching does really sort of bring the level up and drives the headphones nicely, no matter what headphones you have. On the back here, we have another balanced output, a variable and fixed switch. Then we have RCA inputs and we have a digital input, USB-C. This is MQA balanced. Uh, so anything that is lossless audio, this thing will take care of. And of course, a five volt DC power plug. The power does come with the device. It's got a nice matte finish aluminum, nice brushed aluminum on the front and the back. It sounds great. It sounds great. And it's reasonably priced at about $190, I believe. They just came out with a new signature version that's more expensive, but this thing does sound really great. It won't take up much space on your desk uh, and it will give you a lot of different options for high quality sound while you're sitting at the desk. You might be saying to yourself, okay, Jason, that's great, but uh, how, what do I listen to? Three, what, what headphones do I use? I don't want, you don't want to use the AirPods Max because they've got lightning to 3.5 millimeter. It's not lossless audio. So if you're going to go the route of a, of a DAC, you want to get something really good. Like this right here, these are the Sennheiser HD 600s. I've had these for many years. These are probably my favorite headphones of all time, and they are expensive, anywhere from a few hundred dollars to $400. But these are sort of the older version of the HD 600 family. They came out with the HD 650s later on. I mean, one thing they did with the HD 650s is they got rid of this sort of marbled, ugly headband and, and you know, surrounds on the ear cups. The best way I could describe it is these are very linear and very clean. They reproduce the sound that's coming through them very, very well, very, very accurately, very, very true to the sound that's coming into them, which is what I like. I guess the, the HD 650s, I would say, have a little bit more presence in the bass than these do. These are not bass heavy, neither are the 650s either, but they are very, very good. I would say for my money, the HD 600 and 650 are the sort of gold standard of the mid-range audiophile headphone. That's, that's, that's my estimation. Sure, there are a lot of other good things out there, but these guys I like quite a bit. What I've linked down in the description below is the Drop Sennheiser collaboration, the HD6XX. Drop is a company that works with manufacturers to create slightly lower priced versions of their iconic gear. And the HD six XX is only $300. Whereas it's very difficult to find the HD six fifties for less than 400. Uh, you can do it sometimes, but it's, it's not all the time. So I would recommend if you want to have a great sounding desktop audio setup, then, then a DAC, the iFi DAC plus HD 6XXs would be a great way to get yourself started. Of course, I, like I said, if you want to know about speakers, let me know and I'll do a video about speakers. That's, that's something that I don't feel like I can cover in just one video. Anyway, that's all the stuff that I feel like you need to have a Bang & Mac Studio setup that will serve you well for many, many moons to come. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, please hit me down in the comments below. If you want to see future videos, hit that subscribe button. If you want to yell at me about something, then you know how to do that as well. We'll always have a boisterous discussion here on the Jason T. Lewis channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here. Until the next time, I'm out.